Okay, hello and good evening to everyone here in the U.S. I want to say welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, one carbohydrate that can be causing lots of anger. I've been getting lots of emails and people out there asking me to talk a little bit about anger. So I figured that what I wanted to do, I wanted to tie in some research and try to find nutritionally what we're doing every day that could be causing us to become jittery. Hello there, my chat room there from Australia. I want to say hello. Uh, notifications are going out right now as we'll continue the program now and they will catch up. This will be put back on my channel right after the program. If you don't get to see it all, you'll be able to see it later. So the program here is about anger. Now, I'm not going to go into the psychology of anger, but I am going to go into the nutritional physiology, biochemistry to teach a, a little bit about, you know, why are we feeling angry? Why are we feeling, feeling jittery? And there's one thing that I've found, this one carbohydrate, and I'm sure many of you probably already know what it is. Uh, it's not too hard to figure out, but it is something that, yes, it's the old sugar. This one carbohydrate is the kicker to anger. And you're going to see why in just a few minutes. Uh, these carbohydrates, number one, our sugar is in about every food that we can have. All the processed foods that we see on the shelves, uh, from snacks to pastries to breads, uh, there is a big difference between simple and complex carbohydrates. And that's what we're going to learn because simple sugars go into the system and they're broken apart real fast, causing a shooting rise, a spike of sugar in the blood, causing us to feel jittery, jittery. But that's not really the answer. The, the answer is when it rises, it falls. That's correct. So it's the falling of the blood sugar that causes the brain to go into like a state of shock or panic that causes us to become jittery, craving more sugar. So generally what happens first, I want to say about sugar, that sugar has no nutritional value, white processed sugar. There are many different kinds of sugar. And while we're on that, let me just go to that particular thing. So I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, but before I tell you about that, I want to go over here. And just to let you know here, you're saying, wow, cocaine. Now, I know I just lit up a whole bunch of eyes just now, probably a whole lot of brains. And you're probably why you may be wondering why I just brought this up. You look at sugar versus cocaine. Guess what? Sugar is like nine times more addictive than cocaine. Now, we always think of cocaine as being addictive. Yes, it is like alcohol or smoking or whatever it is. But sugar is like eight or nine times higher addictive. So it tells you basically what the brain, the body wants to achieve, wants to get more of because we become addicted to it. Now, I realize that when the sugar spikes up, okay, because I, I want to kind of put this together where I don't skip around too much. But when this sugar spikes up, we get, uh, as you know, the pancreas releases insulin. And you have many other hormones that are being released, like adrenaline, like cortisol. But the problem with cortisol, because, because adrenaline and cortisol are both stress hormones, that when cortisol is released, it gives you the feeling in the brain to want more of that sugar. It's a crave. And then when you get the sugar and you reach for the donut or the pastry or whatever it was, you're putting empty, carbo empty uh, carbs into you empty uh, minerals, empty vitamins. And uh, just from that in itself, it becomes a whole vicious cycle. Now, this throws off the, the dopamine in the brain, the serotonin in the brain. It throws off the neurotransmitters in the brain. And we then get jittery. We get anxious. Uh, we get antsy. And all of this leads to this short term, short fuse, this firecracker, this bomb that goes off inside of us that makes us feel angry, makes us feel jumpy, snappy. If you look at the things that you do and you're saying, why? I don't know why I'm like this. You need to look at the foods that you're eating 
And I'm with, that's what I'm here to review with you to get you more aware of these particular ways in your diet and your food that you can change the way you eat because we do understand that food is your best medicine. But as I wrote in, the, uh, in my thing here on the page, I wrote food can be your worst medicine. And that leads to a lot of sickness. We know that sugar causes many diseases. We know that excess of sugar leads to storage of fats and triglycerides. We know that stored too much sugar is a irritant. We know it causes inflammation. We know it leads to diabetes, heart disease, and potentially cancer and other diseases that we don't even know about. But sugar is very toxic. Now, in all respect, I'm not telling you to get off of your sugar. I am going to teach you to try to minimize your simple sugars and try to fulfill it more with the complex carbohydrates. So that takes us to uh, our next thing, which we call the simple good complex carbs versus the bad simple carbs. Now you can look at the left, your whole grains, your, your quinoas. Quinoas are so good for you. They've got so much great protein, your nuts and seeds, your oatmeals, your fruits. And by the way, one very important thing that I want you to understand is that the fruits that have the skins on it, like your apples and your pectins, are your fibers that slows down the metabolism of sugar into the cells. And that's very important. So if you're just cutting out all your skin and all your fiber, you're going to have potential issues of spiking of sugar. Now, your bad carbs, you can read them. These are like what you uh, feed your children or many of you, or maybe potentially feed yourself or maybe your spouse. Uh, it's low in fiber. Fiber is a very important thing. I want you to realize that when you add fiber to your diet, you're not going to have those mood swings. It's going to sustain your your carbohydrates can sustain your insulin levels. And one of the best things you can do in the morning is have some protein, not just all carbs. Protein helps sustain and balance out insulin because when insulin is on the rise, that's when we start getting the fat cells to fill up. That's when we start throwing off all these different chemicals in the brain that causes the imbalances, that causes us to be antsy and short-tempered. It causes us to crave. So animals will generally go out and find food. Man or woman will sometimes ignore the hunger that their body's trying to get because we're deficient in particular minerals because these white sugars deplete minerals from our foods and from our body, inside our body, and it takes out minerals. So that's going to take us to another very important thing. All right, uh, let's go ahead and find out a little bit about mineral cravings. Now look at this. This is a great chart. I love this chart. Uh, you may crave chocolate because you're deficient in magnesium. You may crave sweets because you're deficient in tryptophan or uh, carbon or chromium. But you realize like foods like turkey that has natural tryptophan in it that makes you feel relaxed and serene, it increases serotonin in the brain. All right, you can just read that on your own. This is a great thing to look back at. But all these foods that you're potentially deficient in there that you're craving sweets on, I'm going to show you in another chart really the best foods you should be eating. Now, I see some names in the chat room that are very wise and very educated on nutrition. OK, so you're going to see a couple of very important things that I want to share with you that I think are really important. Um, let's go to some healthy snacks just to brief this. Now, the reason why I bring this up, like in the morning, you can just have oatmeal banana and some maybe some almonds or maybe just uh, oatmeal and almonds. Always good with nuts. These are some great combinations of snacks. Uh, you can look at these. You can come back to them. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, we look at. Uh, foods for carb control. This just really shows you certain foods. And as I go to this chart up here, this is a great get lean grocery list. This is one of my favorite uh, little charts. You can, put, you can actually photocopy this, do whatever you want to do. Um, if I can send it to you, you can request it. I'll pull it off my desktop and send it to you. Um, but this particular thing just really tells you the right foods. It doesn't really have those fast 
high simple carbohydrates. So simple carbohydrates are the ones that really destroy you and they destruct you. And these are the ones that cause your body to become jittery, become anxious, become frigidy, and become angry. I'm telling you that anger has a lot to do with nutrition. It has a lot to do with your chemistry. And anger is not all about trying to take a drug and take the anger out by changing the the serotonin levels or the dopamine or, the, or, or the other neurotransmitters in the brain, because if you don't address nutrition, nutrition is going to, uh, those white sugars is going to take the nutrition out of your body. It's going to give you lots of problems. So we have the good carbs and bad carbs. Uh, as you see, the good carbs are, are really harder to digest. They burn slower. They make you feel fuller. Uh, if you look at the bad carbs, you can come back to this, which will be on my channel, by the way. Uh, the bad carbs really do everything that we don't want it to do. It's going to make you crave food. The right way to eat is small meals throughout the day, every few hours. Uh, many people don't do that. They just kind of, you know, go to the simple sugars. But remember that when you crave food and you're hungry and you're eating empty calories, those empty calories is telling your body, your, ba your brain and your body is telling you that you need more nutrients. So by eating more of the crappy stuff is going to keep depleting the nutrients. Like the magnesium, you need to be adding magnesium. That's why so many people are mag deficiency. It's because of the white sugar. You're mag deficiency. Because you say, well, I'm eating these good foods that have magnesium and the greens and the calcium, but I'm deficient. I have osteoporosis. I have jumping in the muscles. I have cramping all the time because these white sugars are depleting your minerals. And so that other chart that I showed you, you need to go back to that. That's really important. So here again, quick little picture, the good carbs, the bad carbs. Uh, we showed you here the healthy snacks. And we showed you here uh, basically the carb control. Uh, the mineral cravings, I think, is something you need to go back to. Uh, this is a really, really good pick. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to share that quick little simple video. I think it's, it, it's really, really important. It sounds very basic, uh, but I can promise you that this information, by just changing your diet, getting rid of those quick, simple sugars, preventing the, that, that crazy imbalance from going on in the brain, it's all nutritionally related. So go through those, uh, those charts, uh, start Googling, Googling a little bit more on good food combining uh, and try to stay away from those crazy, simple sugars because that's Spiking the sugar level up, throwing the insulin levels up, causing potential insulin resistance, potentially type 2 diabetes in the future, as well as the cortisol levels, the adrenaline levels, and it's all kind of going haywire. And you're reacting just like anything, anyone else or any human being would react or any animal react, and you're, you're, you're not balanced. You're off, and you're frigidy, and you're antsy. So, if you're antsy and you see that you're short-tempered, you're short-circuit, you see that work you're, you know, with your boss, with, with your spouse, with your, your girlfriend, with your, your son or your daughter, or maybe with yourself, or you just feel like, like you just want to just get out of your body, um, please, I'm telling you, try this first. It's safe, it's effective, and you have everything in the world to, to become more healthier. All right. God bless you, everyone. Uh, by the way, if you need to get through me, it's Motivational Doc on Facebook. That's my fan page. And um, uh, just me, Stevia. Uh, I, I, you know, there's a lot of controversy on Stevia, believe it or not. Uh, but with Stevia, you'll notice with uh, Stevia in a lot of different chocolates or different foods, they usually have some alcohol sugar with it uh, because to help balance it out. Usually you don't see Stevia on its own. Uh, anyways... Uh, yes, someone said it, they banned it in UK, and there's a lot of controversy on that with the sugars, and this becomes a whole big market of money. Anyways, uh, God bless everyone, and we thank you for being in the chat room. Uh, we'll keep in touch. May you have a beautiful night here in U.S., a beautiful day uh, overseas. We love you, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye.